Hi everybody. Um, so we're last, that's the good news, and we're the only thing that's keeping you from the pub, that's the bad news. So we won't, <laughs> we won't uh, keep you too long. So um, the name of our presentation, oh this, I'm Neil, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know me, and this is Jane. So, um, so I'll do most of the talking because I'm, I'm a big talker, and uh, Jane, Jane will come in at the end with her nuggets of wisdom which is what you're really here for. So anyway, um, the title of our presentation is From Woeful to Wow, Making Workshops Work. Right, so more W words. We do like a W word. So um, we'll answer these questions around our wow workshops. So the who, first of all, so I'm Neve O'Sullivan and I'm the research officer and librarian, the Irish Blood Transfusion Service. Jane, do you want to... I'm Jane Burns, the manager of Information and Library Web Services at the Irish Hospice Foundation and a part-time lecturer at UCD. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only time we'll do that, don't worry. Um, okay, so more W questions. So the why. So the question was, why do so many workshops fail, including our own? We'd run a few that hadn't, well, I'd run a few that had, hadn't really been a workshop. Um, and sometimes, why are they so awful? Again, just, just to be alliterative and we like our Ws. Um, the what. Um, run a workshop and how to run a workshop. So a workshop on workshops, wow. <laughs> um, so the wire, I'm getting sick of these jumping words. Um, so, uh, international, oh yes, so we decided we'd, we'd um, run our wow workshop at the International Congress of Medical Librarians. Um, and it was also the European Association, Association of Health Information and Libraries. Um, so it was actually, it's a huge deal um, for anyone in the health libraries community. Um, there were probably over, I'd say 400, was it, yeah. delegates. And it was held in Dublin Castle, very salubrious surroundings. Um, and it was on in June last year. So another who. Um, we had 25 participants from 10 countries. So it was very interesting because their first language for a lot of them wasn't um, English. It was great fun though. Um, can anyone spot the, the paddy in the group? <laughs> <laughs> we only had one. No, anyone? Uh, Liz Doerr there in, on the left at the front. Yeah, so our, yeah you're right, whatever. Um, yeah, so everyone was, they were from the Nordic countries. We had a Canadian, we had an American, we had um, Scandinavian, um, yeah, from all over really. But anyway, they were really lovely. They were a lovely group and uh, they agreed to pose for a picture at the end and everything. So they looked like they'd had fun anyway, but we did tell them to smile. But um, Right, so the how, so how were we going to do this? So we basically running a workshop within a workshop. So we'd, we'd do something in the workshop as an example of what to do in a workshop. Do you get me? <laughs> uh, it makes sense, it made sense to me anyway. Um, our promise in our war workshop on workshops, we would show how to plan, execute and deliver a workshop that works. So it's mainly the showing, we would show them by our actions what they should do. Um, so this was our checklist, uh, topic and title, pre-engage the audience, workshop presentation, icebreakers, props and aids, goodies, prizes and loot, group work, sum up, toolkit and follow up. Oh yeah, that's uh, one of the props. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jane loved that prop and we'll, we use it to good effect um, during the workshop, so we'll explain how. Um, so the first thing is, um, so this is us telling the workshop people, what, not, not telling them, advising them what to do. Um, so decide on the theme, obviously, that's the first thing. See a need, fill a need. So I'm a great believer in give them people what they want, not what we think they want, but give them what they want. Okay. Um, see a need, fill a need. Um, a catchy title. I'm very into catchy titles. I think, um, who was talking today about catchy titles? Uh, yes, yeah. Um, Chris was talking, and, and it, I think it really works. I think, and so I've looked a lot into this. Um, uh, it's usually four words is good in a title. So, um, man walks on moon. That's self-explanatory. <laughs> headless body in topless bar. <laughs> that actually did happen. Uh, a headless body was found in a topless bar. <laughs> um, I love this one. Foot, heads, arms, body. Does anyone know what this might mean? Anyone at all? No? Michael Foote, if I said Michael Foote. 
My left foot. No, Michael Foote. Oh, <laughs> Michael Foote, he headed up a uh, nuclear arms disarm and body so I love that foot heads arms body and that was in the sun or something and then slugs and snails versus sugar and spice that was our um, national medical director at work gave a talk once and he just called it that so we all turned up going oh gosh this is going to be exciting you know and it turned out to be the difference in haemoglobin levels between <laughs> male, <laughs> male and female. Like, he got us all in the room and we had to sit there for an hour. So, um, so sometimes the title, while it's great to have a good title, sometimes you have to live up to the title. Anyway, um, so engage pre-workshop. If possible, engage participants before the workshop. We did one with um, Survey Monkey, and we just got, got them to find out what they're looking for and then we tried to tailor the workshop to suit their needs. Um, so the presentation, use your slides to explain and instruct. Um, you can use it to record answers and findings as well. We found that quite good. Um, Jane would type as I was speaking, sort of, and they, you know, the slides were like a takeaway as well. Um, put the slides in the printout, and images are the universal language. So sometimes, um, I love quirky images, so sometimes like, I just type in, you know, um, slides, say, and then you, that picture comes up, you know, so sometimes it's, it's not obviously the types of slides I'm talking about, but it's nice to just play with the images, so. Anyway, oh, this is, now, go on, Jane's um, sphere, <laughs> which is called a... Hoberman sphere. Hoberman sphere. So basically, how we use this, and this is a brilliant idea, I thought it really worked well. We use it as an icebreaker, and it kind of got everyone... Um, laughing and we made them throw it around the room yeah and everybody had to do a iter different iteration of ha so the first person said ha next person said ha ha so we went to like 37 ha ha's and they were ready to pass out it was a nice icebreaker yeah. <laughs> and we also um threw the ball like so how it works is you basically throw the ball at someone like the question is uh, we asked them because we knew they were from um, not irish so um the question was like your first your impressions of Ireland and like I'd throw the ball say to Marie and she'd go like oh wet and then, uh, then to Mark oh cold and then you know friendly and like people were coming oh god what am I gonna say will I catch the ball you know but actually it got people's adrenaline going so I think as an icebreaker that was a fantastic um, and it's not gonna hurt someone if they don't catch it so you, it's it's the health and safety um, we hope <laughs> health and safety proof um, right so Right, so the group work, um, we basically talked about our shared experiences, the good, the bad and the ugly of workshops. So we came up in the end with um, a presentation, it's like going to the pub, um, because you just get yourself gussied up or whatever, and, or not, and you go to the pub and you, um, you know, entertain, right? Um, so a presentation is easy, but a workshop is like hosting uh, dinner party from hell because it's so much work I and mean, you have to plan the menu you have to go and buy the food you have to cook it then you have to your work isn't done at the workshop itself or the dinner itself you have to make sure everyone's you know comfortable and warm and has enough to eat etc so really it is it was a huge amount of work not only before the workshop but after but during the workshop and even after so um not for the faint-hearted so the wow toolkit we gave them two toolkit as well so we gave them a guide to the amazing Windows snipping tool. Do you all use it? Because your life is going to be transformed. It really is the most amazing thing ever. Um, a printout of a presentation. A wow workshop guide uh, fo on photophonia. If anyone has used that, it's fabulous. Um, you can make amazing slides out of it. And you can put the text in anywhere. That we, we picked a New York street sign in Jane's honour. Um, then we gave, I had done a poster on uh, picture pref perfect presentations about um, using images for uh, presentations. And then we gave them a six steps to a wow workshop, um, the steps there as well. So uh, the takeaways, we gave them, do you want to go now? Yeah, okay, you've got it. Right, so just to say, uh, wow, <laughs> we gave them badges. So I'm sorry, we, we didn't, uh, there were only 25, so we could afford 25 badges like these. They were in high demand. Um, but today we've given you a sticker. So I don't know if they're doing the rounds there. Have people got them? Good. You can actually stick them on your clothes or your bag. Or your, I stuck some on my phone as well. So if anyone, has everyone got their sticker? 
Well, anyway, um, if uh, they're doing the rounds, anyway, <laughs> come find us afterwards. We have a few more. Um, right, so I'll let Jane take over from here. Will you hold my ball? Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. So one of the things being librarians, we had lots of loot. We knew this would appeal, so we gave them lots of loot. Um, we had lots of prizes to break it up because workshops are really boring. So Neve came up with some great ones. You know, who came the furthest? And there was a little bit of an argument. There was a girl from Canada and a girl from New York. So you know, the girl from New York was a little rough. We let her win. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. The other thing, people giving us lots of useful tips and emails, so we wrote them all down, and then we emailed them after the lesson. It was great to meet you. Here are some of the things that came up. Uh, we used a lot of blank process templates for delegates to customize takeaways, so they could go back and start doing a workshop straight away. Um, and what we did, we gave them a quick uh, feedback survey on WOW. We wanted to know exactly what they thought in the moment. The other thing that we did was a little contentious. We gave, oh, yeah. um, and when they came in, we gave them postcards to fill in, because the first thing that we didn't want for them was to start on the phone. Everybody's awkward when they first come into a room. Some of them didn't know each other. We gave a postcard and we said, look, we just want you to write a message to yourself and fill in your address. Now, some people thought this was amazing. We had one person who read us the State Secret Act or something, <laughs> and she was very upset that someone might have a look at her address. But anyway, so it was actually was good. And it was also, when they got home, we mailed the postcards two weeks after the conference. So it was another little reminder of the experience that they had. The other thing that we did was we hopefully we gave a positive and inspiring, uh, inspiring experience. And so far, all the feedback's been really well. So takeaways and, and lessons learned. So Neve said this. It was a lot, a lot of work, but working with Neve was a lot of fun. So we did a lot Long of work quiz. before. Yes, yeah. thank you. We did a lot of work before, during, and after. Um, and the, the most important thing, and I would say this, is to get a good partner. You really need a you good mix of skills. Yeah. Um, you know, I would go off on, on these incredible tangents. I was going to have people running around Dublin Cast and do and scavenger hunts, and he was like, we have them for two hours, stop. <laughs> the one th challenge that we had was sorting out the physical space. We didn't have eye shot of the rooms that we were going to use before then. So we had people coming in. We were like, oh, this is great. Everyone's here. But there were 10 more coming in behind them. Mm. So we had to move them around. They were sitting in weird positions. So that was a little hard. Um, cultural references. Neve made a lot of Irish cultural references. <laughs> that I got with some of our Scandinavian uh, participants had no idea what she was talking about. So, uh, and then the two of us tend to be a little verbose, so we had to watch the time. Uh, the other thing we had to do was, to, we really adopted was the kiss principle and really hone that in. Uh, we had to reassure people we weren't going to kiss them. Uh, this was another language issue, but to keep it simple, stupid, what, something, okay. Yeah. Well, the hands, the hands up answers, this is a huge thing. What was that? That was because, um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so we, we said we'd go around the room, you know, um, and, you know, just say who you are, where you're from, and what you, you know, oh, what, yeah, what you want idea. to get out of yeah. the day, right? So, you'd get, you know, oh, hello, I am Helga, I am working for some huge long name, and, you know, like five minutes later, Helga was finally finished, the next thing you're on to Anka, and, just, and, like, you know, we were about 20 minutes in, and we'd done about four people, so, I was like, oh, we'll, sorry, no, we'll just kind of, you know, we'll just move along. Who's, who has done workshops before? Who hasn't? You know, so it's maybe if you've, a, if you've short a time, um, just do kind of, you know, is this, what are you, is everyone, who's hoping to get such and such out of today? You know, because I think the, the other 20 odd people who were, who didn't get the chance to say who they were, where, where they came from, were kind of pissed off that they didn't. <laughs> anyway, so come on, sorry, Jane. The, the, other thing, hold on, the other is, uh, you know, to be flexible and adaptable. Like, like Neve said, we knew like 20 minutes in, we were dead. So we had to, we had to move things around, had to change. The, we didn't know where we were going to. We had, we had breakout sessions. We had no breakout room. Yeah. So we found someone walking around Dublin Castle and told them, I went, I said, we need a room. And they gave us a room. They cleared the room outside. So you have to be flexible and adaptable. That's it. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs>